Hello my dear friends. I am Bhavna Pant Borai and I teach maths in St Mary's School Pune. Today I am going to discuss with you all a very important topic of mathematics that is direct and inverse variation using activity based approach. I am going to share my experience of taking this chapter in standard 8. Before I start sharing my experience let me tell you the students were very excited and they have come up with their own explanation in between the lesson while doing the activity based approach over discussion i could assess whether my students have understood the concept the activities are introducing relationship between different things and situations in daily life demonstrating direct variation with a self made clock using bindi to show inverse variation applying direct and inverse variation to calculate data and plot graphs and exploring the relationship and differences between direct and inverse variation i started my class by taking certain examples from daily life activities and asked my students what is the effect of one quantity on the other For example, if one quantity is increasing, how it is affecting the other quantity? They have to just tell me whether the other quantity is increasing or decreasing based on the first quantity. For that, I introduce them with thumbs up and thumbs down activity. For this session, I took these examples. What happens to the mass of glacier in rising temperature? Or if the price of some grocery items like onion increases what has happened to the quantity in the market or if a vehicle increases its speed what happens to the distance it can cover in an hour this was truly an enriching experience to see my students were already aware about the fact that is the effect of one quantity on the other i just facilitated them by giving them the mathematical term for it that is variation my class was eager to explore the activities on the two variation so i started with the activity on direct variation for this activity we need a clock its hour and minute hand should be moving put the hour and minute hand at 12 o'clock move the minute hand to make it 12:5 12:10 12:15 12:20 12:30 12 i told my students to draw this observation table and note down the angles formed by the two hands after taking few observation in the table to my surprise my students were able to tell me that both the quantities are going in direct variation this was the time when i challenged them by giving them one question that is what is the angle swept at 1217 after some time my students were having the answer correctly they observed the table and even some of them applied their previous knowledge of ratio and proportionality to get this answer this was the correct time when i introduced my class with the new term that is constant of proportionality in direct variation i took some examples of direct variation seeing the importance of this topic in widely other subjects i gave my class a very important concept of biology that is a microscopic bacteria can be seen so enlarged in their textbook by using the concept of direct variation i told my students if a photograph of a bacteria enlarged 50000 times attains a length of 5 cm as shown in the figure what is the actual length of the bacteria if the photograph is enlarged 20000 times only what would be its enlarged length here 
we solve the question by using constant of proportionality. Next, we moved on to inverse variation using an activity. Even a simple object like bindi can be used to teach indirect variation in the class. I took it in my class and it was really a fun activity for my students. Once we finished this activity, after observing the table, my students came up with the answer that here the two quantities are going in opposite direction. One is increasing and the other is decreasing. That means this is a case of inverse variation. So, variation is used to describe the relationship between two quantities. But is there any relationship between direct and inverse variation? For that, let us do one activity. Take a square paper sheet. Measure the length and find out the area and its perimeter. And note it down. Fold the paper, measure the length and find out the area and perimeter again. In each square and repeat this for 4 to 5 times. Make a table to record the observation. Show them graph of relationship in each pair of number of folds, area and perimeter. I asked them a question. What is the relationship between the number of parts and its area? What is the relationship between the number of parts and its perimeter? And what is the relationship between area and perimeter? This described the relationship between the type of variations. I concluded my class by taking few example in a rapid fire like a quiz show. The students had to identify whether variations described are direct or inverse with a brief explanation. As a teacher, even I have realized that using activity based approach may be inversely proportional to the time. But I must tell you, it is directly proportional to the effective learning and seeing that kind of atmosphere in the class. I persuade you all to please take this in your class as well and see the kind of enthusiasm among your students. The activities discussed here are given in the text lesson plan and the link of the lesson plan is given in the description box. Please share your experiences with us. Thank you for watching.